You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. I would tell you something that would um, help you if you would listen carefully. You see, in this life, eh? you can't go beyond your drive. You see, in this life, you can't travel beyond your drive. You have to know what drives you. You have to know what drives you. There are things that drives me in life. One of the things that drives me is God's presence. Is my biggest obsession and my biggest hunger. Another thing that drives me, of course, God's presence and God's worship is interconnected. God's worship. God's presence drives me. God's worship drives me. Another thing that drives me is God's word. Remove these things from a man's life. He's a dead man. Why is he still living? You have to know what drives you. People only end up the way they choose to end. Nobody will be responsible for how you end. You end the way you choose. Not even the way the devil choose. Not even the way God choose. You only end the way you choose. I said something one time and I will say it again when you are born you look like your parents as you age you look like your decisions Hmm? your life is like a basket when you are born God hands you over a basket and he tells you fill it Let me explain that. I'll say it again, then I'll explain. When you are born, you know what God does? He hands you over a basket. And he tells you, feel it. The implication of that statement is that you become what you are intentionally becoming. God will not be responsible for what you become. Let me give you a critical example. When you woke up this morning and dressed up to church, did God tell you what to wear? You chose what to wear. Is, is that correct? You chose the shoe to wear. You chose the socks to wear. You didn't need any special voice from heaven to tell you what to wear. The world is running in circles people are running in circles just because they don't know what they are meant to be feeling into their life they don't know what should drive their life they don't know what they should pursue they don't know what they should seek after so you see humanity is running in circles running in circles like a merry-go-round and they keep running from pillar to post and they're heading nowhere you see one of the things i'll tell you right now in this service nobody sir nobody will be responsible for how you end you will be responsible for how you end. If you end well in life, it's because you decided to. If you end bad in life, it's because you decided to. I want you to settle it and have peace. Nothing can fight a man's destiny like himself. I don't think you hear what I'm saying. Can I say it again? nothing can fight a man's destiny like himself 
Whenever you get up in the morning and stand on the mirror, the person you're looking at in the mirror is the number one enemy of you. Not the devil. Is you. You see, I want you to make a commitment this morning while listening to me. Make a commitment and a resolve. An absolute resolve that you will take your life serious. Early this morning, I was studying the scriptures. At some point, I, I paused and I sat down and I said, Lord, with all these things that are available, why are people still failing? Why are people still struggling? I listened to President Buhari say something, ex-President Buhari, while he was exiting office. His last speech before he left office. He said he cannot wait to leave the office and go back to Daura, where he's from, and go and take care of his cows. He said he has missed them so much that he can't wait to go back and take care of his cows. He said, do you know why? He said, because leading cows seem to be easier than leading human beings. So when he made that statement, people laughed. But I didn't laugh. I paused to ponder on what he said. And I found out he's correct. If your life lacks self-government, nobody can lead you. If you don't have self-regulations, nobody can lead you. I want to say it again. Make a commitment absolutely to be disciplined. Take your life serious. Take your life serious. If you have a vision and you have a purpose and you claim you have a destiny, take your life serious. So I was going to the scriptures this morning and I saw I pondered. I said, Lord, Sunday after Sunday, I preach. Thursday after Thursday, I preach. Tuesday after Tuesday, I preach. In fact, last week, I burnt Tuesday to Friday preaching. Every day. And each of the sessions of training lasted up to five hours. But when you go back and sit down, you are looking for how many of these things you are teaching are people putting to practice you see that out of 100% of what we teach, people are not even put into practice 1%. 1%. The scriptures is loaded. The Bible is loaded. There's nothing you need in life you can't find here. Nothing you want to become in life that the secret is not already unveiled in the scriptures the secret and principle for becoming anything in life already unveiled in scriptures it shocks me how i spent time to study this book and i've not finished studying it since i was born then it shocks me more when i see a christian coming to church he has a copy of this bible yet he doesn't know what is in it okay even if he doesn't know what is in it somebody studies it and then brings the word brings the training brings the teaching bring everything make it available to him still he's at the same spot do you know what the bible says it says that the part of a just is like a shining light that shines bright and bright and bright what it means is that every day we take a look at a just man his life should be moving forward it should be moving forward. You shouldn't be at the same spot every day. Always access your life. And find out if you are at the same spot, the same place you were yesterday. I have met on serious people in this world. And I wonder, does this guy know the value of his destiny? Does he know the value of his tomorrow? Does he know the value of his future? I've met on serious ladies and I say, Lord, how will you how do we keep pushing these people to become what you have proposed for them to become? How long? How long? How long? The first word I have for you this morning. Come 
going to church does not make anything out of you. If you don't make anything out of your coming to church, coming to church won't make anything out of you. If you don't put to use the things you're learning here, just coming down and sitting down here will not profit you. If you don't take serious the things I teach you and practice them, it doesn't matter what you hear. It doesn't matter how many times you shout. It will still not profit you. When I see men and women who have the potential for greatness living a normal life, it makes me cry. When I see men and women who have potential to do big things, living small, it makes me wonder. Ah. You know, people say, ah, this pastor is so good. The man is so gifted. The man is so amazing and I tell them if I give you half of my routine you can't do it if I give you half of what I do every day you can't do it if I give you my discipline you will require to be disciplined to go through my discipline I'm harder on myself than I'm harder on anybody if I tell you the amount of hours I spend just to develop just to develop, just to train, just to grow, just to develop. It will shock you. When I now see believers of today, Christians, this is why the church is a laughing stock. This is why a lot of Christians are a are, are laughing stock in the world today. Let me tell you something. Christianity makes you lazy. What I mean by that, you see this thing called Christianity. It's a religion. That's not what God came here to introduce. What God sent his son to come and introduce is his kingdom. Not religion. This Christianity, Muslim, no, the, all those things are man-made. Oh. What Jesus came here to forestall is his kingdom. The kind of gospel you fed on that made you lazy is the one man introduced. That one that you come to church, sit down and be waiting for a man to come and lay hands on your head. Then you take everything, okay. There's a place for that. But let me tell you, you want to get the result Dangote gets, or you want to get the result Tony Lumilu gets, you want to get the result Bill Gates gets, no laying of hands can take you there. If you don't understand the routine of Tony Lumilu, if you don't catch the lifestyle of Dangote, if you don't catch the discipline of Bill Gates, you are going nowhere. You will stay in church and die poor. That's why a lot of Christians are called church rats. Because they keep expecting that when God somewhere we do something for them they come to church here, here, here when they finish hearing they go out and they don't practice check why unbelievers are successful in what they do even when they seem not to be Christians like you check their routine check their schedules check how they walk Check their lifestyle. Check what they practice. While watching one of AY's program, they were interviewing him. Was that AY or another comedian? They were interviewing one of those um, superstar comedians. And uh, he did a meeting, a comedy night program, and it was massively attended. People were buying tickets for as much as five million. So when the meeting was over, they were interviewing the guy to find out what and what and what he did to succeed with that program. You know what he said? He said, first of all, I'm happy that I'll finally get at least one night of sleep before my next program in, in London. He said, I have not slept in the last six months. In the last six months. He said, I have not slept. I have been 
up and doing for six months for this program is I have not slept in the night walking tirelessly just to deliver this he doesn't go to church, he's not a Christian he's, not, he's an unbeliever that other lady who did Guinness, who won Guinness Book of Record cook competition she it was four days four days right she was standing for four days cooking different dishes for four days yeah I have a problem with some other things with regards her uh, clothing and blah 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 but that's what I'm here to talk about I want to pick something out of the same lady and show you there's some of you here if we put you in a kitchen for three hours you will slip your way into the pot and the pot will cook you you will be the one they will serve as food and that person stood four days four four days and four nights cooking more than a hundred and something dishes and finally broke the Guinness World Record and entered the thing. Now, people are giving her checks. Governors are giving her this. The president, current president, even wrote something about her on Facebook. She's getting gift from left, right, center. Somebody will say, oh, she's just a lucky girl. Life is not run on luck. Yes, yes, you see, you people in Emory State, you don't know who you are. You are far from what is going on. I, I, you know, like, when I access our worship, we are worshiping in church. I said, people are just, are just sitting there and looking at you. I said, this person, I wish he knows he's losing a season of his life. He's losing. She's losing a season of her life. A vital season. You see the age where I am now. I can only be going forward. I can't go backward. There are things that maybe I would have done as a baby. I can't do again. Like if I want to play football now, no way. I can't play. I know how to play football. But I can't go and enroll in an academy now and say that my career is to pursue football. I can't do that again. That season has gone for me. Your brother who is trying to go abroad to go and play for Chelsea or whatever. He's in his season now. So you see him pursuing his passport, pursuing his visa, doing everything possible to go to, to is in Manchester or whatever, to go and play and all that. He's in his season. He's within the age bracket for that. If I do anything enough to go and achieve that, I'm wasting my time. They will not even give me visa. I get hot, not for me, but for you. When I see a young man who cannot pray, what is going on with your life? When I see a young man who cannot worship, when I see a young man who can who does not take his life serious, it, it gets to my marrow. I'm scared for you. So scared. Though. First message I give you this morning, as you leave this place this morning, resolve it in your heart to take your life. What? Shout it aloud. Do a retrospection of your life. Just do a survey of your life. And find out whether you are where you want to be. That is even if you know where you want to be. Because if you know where you want to be, there's a way you will be. Now. If you don't know where you are going, you just feel your life is okay. If you really know the future, if you know where you want to be, you will not even be looking at me the way you're looking at me. Anyway, I found out something that talking to people without a vision, without an objective, without a goal is a waste of time. Because nothing you say will inspire them. You only inspire a man who has a vision. If a man has a goal, if he has a target and you're talking to him, something he will be dragging him towards that vision. If he doesn't have any plan, no goal, no vision, nothing. His life is just like that. He just wakes up, eat, wake up, sleep, go back to bed, wake up, eat, go back to bed, just walk around, loaf around. If that is his life, no matter how good I sound, you can never. You will never. Nothing will inspire you. You're all young people, my friends, invest in yourself early. Majority of you here, young, invest in yourselves early. Invest in your lives early. A season will come upon you 
where you will not be able to go back and do what you should have done some of you in a few years time you'll be entering family that's when you will know what you did to yourself now don't live your life to chance nobody owes you anything anywhere just understand that if you're living your life the way you're living take it out you will just reach somewhere and somebody will just come and start giving you things and help you you will not succeed you are wasting your time nobody owes you anything nobody owes you nothing that day is coming you will realize it you know i'm a prophet when i talk as a prophet you need to know i'm in the office i'm sounding an alarm now i'm blowing a trumpet so that you will not miss it in life it won't do you good it won't i watched one video a short clip and that clip was talking about how our lives are intercontinent interconnected how many of you watched it i posted it online some won't watch but it's on the group of course when i watched it i was even inspired because i have movie academies i love short short clips i can pass messages easy like that so i'm even going to start shooting some skits this week so when i watched it i posted it online just to help people realize how their life are interconnected and there was this lady who an angel appeared before and said to the lady he said your purpose is to feed the hungry he said see food you have what it takes. Feed the hungry. And the lady was just here pressing phone. And they showed the hungry, another hungry lady who was on the ground, scrolling, you know, going through the, you know, going, rolling on the floor, rolling, shouting, I'm hungry, oh. And the angel appeared to her. He said, don't worry. He said, Tolu is on the way to give you food. But Tolu was pressing phone. And then the angel told the lady who was hungry, said, don't worry, Tolu is on the way to give you food. You, your own purpose is to defend the defenseless. She's hungry, but she has a purpose. Her purpose is to defend the defenseless. And her person's purpose is to feed the hungry. So what was Tolu doing? Pressing phone. The angel came back. I said, Tolu, you are still here. He said, this lady is dying of hunger. He said, please don't disturb my life. I don't have that time. Just leave me alone. I have other things to do. Just leave me alone. Let me uh, focus. Ah, which one is food? Tolu did not fulfill her purpose. So that lady who Tolu should have fed was there, dying of hunger. Because she needed to lose food to eat, get strength, and defend the defenseless. So the lady who was busy on the floor, hungry, finally died. The one who was defenseless finally got attacked by somebody and was killed. Because Tolu did not feed the hungry, the hungry could not defend the defenseless. So you see, when I, when I see people just leave their life to chance, I say, look at a man or a woman that God created and put on him destinies of many people thousands of people living an ordinary life uh, you see this devil holding your eyes from seeing who you can be the day he leaves you he has done you a great favor yeah. the day he leaves you he has done you a great favor this devil holding your eyes from seeing the person that you can be any day his, his hand leaves you he has done you a great favor the song they sang this morning my daddy my daddy your baby is singing i watched where the singer the real singer of that song sang it in house on the rock sang the song in their last um, african praise experience and the pastor therefore has picked the mic and said, oh, even doing sin, I've seen something like that. My pastor said, in one program, he came and ministered. When he finished ministering, my pastor picked the mic and said, doing sin. He said, people like you need to be preserved, though. He said, the songs you're singing are scars on the earth. He said, anywhere you have any project in the world, music project, you want to do music conference, anywhere in the world, the bills are on me. I saw the first time doing sin is having that kind of evil. And then I said the same thing about him. Um, Pastor David, my father, have said something about him. Uh, Bishop Oedebo now works with him very closely. Pastor Adebo, he invites him very, very closely. Do you know where that guy is? 
for taking his life serious. Be here, playing around, doing selling, selling, be, be, be wearing anything you want to wear. Be babbling anything you want to bab. Be looking dirty and be walking around. Be living your life carelessly and be thinking helper is coming. No helper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You will die poor. You will stink. I'm going somewhere. I'm laying the foundation. So that Moses Bleed sang when he finished. I did for us and pick the mic. I said, These songs do you sing? He said, they, 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 The sound. He said, The organization. He said, The choice of words. The choice of vocabularies. He said, The vernacular in the song. He said, These are no songs to localize in Nigeria. He said, This song has to be on the street of London. This song has to be on the street of California, USA, Los Angeles. He said, We now have to rig our gospel stars to beat the secular stars. He said, And he's starting with this man. He said, Anything it will take. He says he's talking with all his partners. He says he's calling on all the businessmen, all the billionaires in the church to invest in this guy now. That they should put all the money they can put in him. That he's going to network all his partners, network all his friends abroad, the best sound engineers in the world he has connection with. If you don't know a difference, the difference is the guy that does experience program every year in December. And he's the greatest music concert that holds in the world on the surface of the earth. Why he was saying that Moses Bliss knelt down was crying. Was crying there. It now occurred to me again. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Be diligent in how you bab your hair. If you're a baby baba a, a baba man, be diligent in how you dress. Be diligent in you, how you do your fashion design if you're a fashion designer. Be diligent in how you sing if you're a gospel musician. Be diligent in how you play. Be diligent. I've seen a lot of fools on the earth. When you see others who are going up, watch their life. See the ones who are going down. Watch their life. You will know who's responsible. It's so certain. Where is that guy who you went to pick? Where is he? Okay, you see what I'm talking. Where is the guy? The guy that plays drum. Where is he? He's not around. Where did he go to? He's walking up and down. That's a fool. That's a big one, a big fool. They can't recognize when God is inviting them into destiny. You know, Mike Murdoch said that the greatest wisdom a man can have is the wisdom to recognize. That's when you meet a man who is carrying your torch lights. Your ability to recognize him is one of your greatest intelligence and wisdom. When you meet the one who is reckless, who is just careless, who just treats things anyhow, who just does things the way he wants to do it, then what you have met is somebody without sense who lacks wisdom. So you see what has happened to that young man today. He has elevation now. That his career has moved to. If he sang a song that just sounded anyhow. If he sang a song that just sounds, the beat just goes off. This one just goes out of timing. Nobody would want to invest there. Be diligent. In your relationships with people, be diligent. How you enter and live people's life, be diligent. Be careful. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, your life will move forward to the extent you can manage, oh, to the extent you can manage access. That's what that guy doesn't know. If you would sit him down and teach him, he maybe you will get some sense. Somebody maybe has opportunity to play drum in church now at this building level of our ministry. And he's playing with it. Few years to come, he can no longer even smell that area. Because that person has taken over. Now that person is cruising and flying all over the world. And he's still poor, begging. What blindness is this? Blind people everywhere. Everywhere. Blind people. Anyway, now let me now connect to even what I want to show you. In brief, and go. Hmm. I don't know if you understand that in this life nothing just happens. Yeah. In this 
this life nothing just happens and in this life things are not accidental no it's an accident it's an accident before the accident check i have always wondered why a person will have the question paper to an exam before the exam he has all the expo already the answer you know maybe you are in school here and then you have an exam to write and somehow the paper you are going to write slicked it, it kind of leaked and then you got the question you went through all the you saw it you saw the questions and entered the exam wrote the exam and failed the exam do you know there's some people who cannot pass an exam by reading the exam by reading for the exam they can't read they can't understand anything the same people even if you give them expo they will still fail if you give them the opportunity to cheat and to pass they will still fail the exam you are not good at writing and passing you are also not good at cheating and passing which one will you do and I found that we serve a very just and fair God because you know one thing I know about God he's not like a lecturer who sets an exam with the intention to fail you God will set an exam and before you write it he will show you the questions he will show you the questions why so that you will not come back and say that ah God this thing you said is hard though even if you have to accuse God and say this exam was hard he will show you but I showed you the question I showed you the answers how come you failed do you know all the exams you want to write in life the questions have been exposed and the answers have been exposed through the word of God shocking enough even through the teaching of your pastor shocking enough through all the trainings of your pastor everything has been exposed and brought to the light it is not what you just know that affects your life it's what you know and do am I talking to somebody here? am I talking to somebody here? it's not just what you know that changes you it's what you know and do Second Chronicles chapter 16. Somebody came to my house one time to pick some equipment. And then they, they called the tricycle guy. The guy parked in front of my house. And then he was honing. He had not even stayed up to one minute. He started honing anyhow. I said, they're hitting the gates. I said, if the person is not ready, they will, he will drop all these things outside. Oh. So I sent the guy who called him. I said, go and check what is happening there. He had already put the instrument, the equipment inside. Just waiting for the last instruction before he goes. So I went outside with him. I wanted to see the guy who was knocking like that. So I came outside. I said, oh God. He was already offloading all the things. I said, oh God, why are you hitting the gate like that? He didn't respond to me. I said, you're even removing the, instru- the equipment already. He didn't respond to me. I said, please, can you just load it back? It's not far you're going. It's around Prescott. Just load it back. At the end of the day, I'll give you 10,000 naira for your fare. I said, give me your account number. Let me transfer you 10,000 if you feel they wasted your one minute. He said, thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, come and check if the thing is not in the inside, but okay. And he drove away. And I touched the guy close to me. I said, I did what I did so you can see how you can help some people. One, you don't know the man who is talking to you. Number two, you don't know what can come out of that relationship. But the same man, if you see him in church where he's vibrating in prayer on a Sunday morning like this, Chukuna, Ono Abonaji, my destiny. Eke Mamu, Eke Hamu, Eke Hamu, die, die, fire, fire. 
is you that should be dying. Is you that the fire should be coming. You're the one holding yourself. You see the problem with religion that has corrupted a lot of people's mind, including some of us who are here. Corrupted the mind, affected our destinies. Oh, let me start by showing you this. I'm going to run fast now because I don't have all the time. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Is that it? Okay. Now look at verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect. Hey. God will give you understanding this morning. You know, we're still on our series, The Mysteries of Favor. So I want to help you see some things, you know. I might round up this series on Thursday. Hmm. Look at this again. Verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. So God is in heaven and his eyes are running to and fro. The man's eyes is not sleeping. The man's eyes is not calm. The man's eyes is not static. It's running to and fro. Running to and fro. Running from nation to nation. Running from families to families. Running from city to city. Running from places to places. And what is he looking for? He says, looking for whom? He said, throughout the whole earth. To show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart. Whose heart. Whose heart is perfect toward him. Erin, thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. There are two kinds of people in that scripture. Number one, he's looking for people whose hearts are perfect. So that he might do what? Show himself strong on their behalf. Then there are another set of people who have done foolishly. And their life will be full of war. Have you seen a man's life or a woman's life? Everything you see is storm, 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 storm. War, war, poverty, poverty, war, poverty, war, everything, war. Because the issue is that when, if God wants to change you, where he actually does the miracle is in your heart. Once your heart goes right, everything in your life begins to go right. Like this word I'm sharing with you now. If it's going to get anything done in your life, if it's going to produce any harvest in your life, where this world is going to go and settle is in your heart. I don't know if you have read your Bible about the four sowers, hmm? the four kinds of the four kinds of ground where seeds were planted. One, the Bible says, was sown on thorny ground. The other one was sown on rocky soil or rocky ground. The other one was sown on the on good soil. And the other one was on the wayside. Now, when Jesus explained the parable, he said that the one that fell on the good soil is the one that fell on fertile ground. And you know what happened to that one? It began to give yield fruit in 30 folds, in 60 folds, and even in 100 folds. So the condition of heart was right. The guy's heart had been transformed. The guy's heart had been reformed. The guy's heart was fertile to receive the engrafted word of God. Hello, somebody. Now, let me tell you something. That guy who didn't come around, let me tell you what happened. I'll tell you guys. I invited him to my house one time for a practice. He plays on drums for practice. When he came, at some point in the training I was doing, and these my trainings are costly trainings and I'm doing them free. At the point, you know, he interrupted me. My gate is about to be locked. I want to be going. I told him, I said, you're a big fool. A very big fool. My last born is older than you. And we are five. Remove age, I'm your pastor. You are in school now. I graduated more than 20 years before you found you know, uh, whatever. I said, is this, is this how you talk? I said, no wonder you are the way you are. Then I gave him some corrections. But guess what? When I was correcting, see his face. I finished correcting him and put some things in order. And we started talking about dress code for the following service. I asked him, do you have a suit? Do you have a tie? Do you have this? Do you have shoes? Do you have this? No, sir. Everyone I asked, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I said, okay, hold on. I went inside, got everything. Got all the things he needed. Tie, suit, jean, wristwatch, 
everything shirt everything package it for him when i came into my study in the house and gave it to him he sat down on the chair he said no sir, i'm not collecting i said okay take this and go i'm giving you something and he knows i'm not collecting the right thing to do is to hey sir you're giving me gift oh i'm so grateful sir ah thank you very much sir even if you don't go on your knees at least stand up uh, no no sir i'm not collecting i, 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 I don't need it no sir I said, collect this and be good. He collected it. Thank you, sir. And stood up and walked and went back home. Guess what? Since after that time, he had not come back to say, ah, thank you, sir. I'm grateful, sir, for that correction you gave me. On top of the correction, you still gave me things. I'm grateful, sir. You know the problem? Heart. 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 Let me even tell you guys something. Those of you who are from a Abaklike Ebony State as a whole, you know why Ebony State is, they say, is the second most poor state in, this, in, the, in the country? It's not because we are not rich. We have money. This state is blessed with natural resources. But do you know why the state is still poor? The heart of people. I've met people you mean good for, they will think you mean bad for them. It's the heart of the people. You see this heart of timidity, this heart of inferiority complex, when the person is doing well, you feel like, who is he, self? What is he trying to show? I stopped. One of my engineers came here the other day, so he didn't come with this guy. He was going. Why he was going? I said, ah, how will you go? He said, let me jump Okada. I said, let's, no, let me get you, Keke, at least. Don't enter Okada. He had already stopped an Okada man. As Okada man was, I was I said, no, enter Keke, Okada. You know, you know the risk of Okada. You're going far. What was he saying? Look at the Okada man's face. This one is I'm trying to spoil business for him. If you see the hatred on his face already. The problem is a victim mindset. It's a victimized, a victim mentality. Any smoothie you're ready to, to attack. Any smoothie you're ready to fight. And the Bible said that God's eyes is running to and fro. Where God brings his favor is on perfect hearts. You know why that is important? God will not... Okay, let me even give you illustrations of the Bible. God wants to favor a man called Gideon. And he comes to Gideon and says, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon now says, no way. I'm not a mighty man of valor. I'm the least of my kindred. And we are from the least clan in this whole community. How can I be? A man? God watched and said, mm, something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. First thing to do is to recreate and reconstruct this man's perception about himself. Once I'm able to handle his self perception, once I'm able to recreate his self image, he will do great things. So God spent time working on how the man sees himself before he even empowered him to go and conquer the Midianites. First thing was to first of all change his mindset, change the way he sees things. I remember inviting my father in the Lord, Pastor David Willy, for a program, National Shift Conference 2016. We used the ICC for that program. The whole place was jammed. So I went to Lagos, invited him. He gave me his word he was coming. And in that program, a day before the program, I called him on the phone. He said he's trying to get a connecting flight from Benin to Enugu. But he cannot get a flight from Benin to Enugu. There's no flight. Now he's in Benin preaching for Mama Idahosa. That is it possible he goes to Lagos, fly from Lagos and come down? Though it's going to be a bit stressful for him. I said, ah, sir, don't bother. If, if it's not going to work, no problem. We tried, try. It didn't work. So he finally did not show up. Now, his billboard was everywhere. Everybody felt this man is going to come. People came because they saw his picture and all that. Ordinarily, I should be angry. Is that okay? Because I will not have to explain to people that, oh, see, oh, this, oh, that, oh, my image might also be at stake. But in the program, I defended him, spoke about why he couldn't make it, he's busy, that, 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 that. We even did a video and sent and another person will be angry but I took it in joy, celebrated him, honored him at the end of that program it was August 2016 October, same year he was to come to a boy for another program International Ministers Conference so he landed Enugu 
11 o'clock that morning and I was supposed to be the one to go to the airport and pick him with the entourage I had my Hilux jeep then I brought it out hit the road 7 o'clock heading down to Enugu with all the convoys picked him from Enugu straight to Afibo for the three days meeting he had there I was with him all through left my service left everything three days finished from there came back to Abakliki for the other three days at the ICC I was walking like a madman. I didn't know some people were observing me. It was even later, somebody came and told me, he said, I was telling my wife, watch out for this man. This man is the wisest man ever. He said, with the fact this man didn't turn up for his program, see how he's still serving him. Hmm? You know, character is reviewed in pressure. Character is reviewed under pressure. Character is reviewed under discipline. Character is reviewed under correction. Character is reviewed under disappointment. That's when character is reviewed. Finally, took him to Abakleke. He did the program. I was inside the hall serving, doing protocol. The last day of the meeting, he called me and gave me some impartations. And then he traveled. Two years after, this time he invited himself, 2018. I didn't need to invite him. He was one of the corners. I'm coming. And he invited himself. And this time he came with every apostolic team that works with him. From South Africa, from USA. All the full squad. His wife. Everybody landed the church. I didn't invite him this time. He came on his own. It was such a glorious meeting. At the end of that meeting, my wedding, following year, he landed again. With the same apostolic team. And this is how we've been since that season till now. Because if the heart is not perfect, when denial come, when delay come, when rejection come, when correction, when anything pressure comes on you, it reveals the real you inside you. What is it about the heart that God is always looking at? What is it about the heart? That's the area to, if you want to see favor in your life, you want to see everything about you align and start working. Check your heart. God is looking for a man. The Bible, his, his eyes are running to and fro on the earth. The man is busy just looking for who he will show himself strong. But the one he's going to show himself strong is the one with a perfect heart. Hello. I don't know if you've ever done something nice for somebody. And after you did it, you expected a small thank you. The person didn't thank you. You know that the problem is heart. Do the nicest thing for people. Some people will never say thank you. Watch. Ten people that Jesus healed. Cleans them of leprosy. Ten. The Bible said nine walked away. Only one came back and lied down and said, thank you, Sao. Hi, thank you. If you know how I've gone around hospitals to deal with this thing, thank you, sir. Jesus did not tell him, you're welcome. Jesus ignored his gratitude and faced the nine people. He said, we didn't know ten of you I healed. One came back. Where is the other nine? Where are the nine? Two things I want to show you from there. One, even Jesus knows that gratitude is a very paramount value. So he emphasized it. I healed ten. Nine walked away. Where are they? Why didn't they come back to say thank you? So if Jesus required gratitude, how much more for men like you? So he was emphasizing the quality and the value of gratitude. But aside that, he was also trying to show us how the heart of gratitude is the scarcest thing that you can find amongst men today. That out of ten people you do something nice for, expect maybe only one to be grateful. Then usually when you watch, you see that the ones who are really grateful are the ones who are in the few number of persons who God is lifting up. Then the majority who are not grateful, watch, they are the ones who are always going backward. People don't know my secrets. Hmm. Hello, somebody. Life is not a struggle thing. No. It's not in torso, hustling, bustling. No. Sit down Learn the principles. When you learn them, apply them. Results will be natural. There's something I will show you on Tuesday, if you will come. Twelve people 
you must never destroy your relationships with. Hmm? Twelve kinds of people. I wanted to do that today. I don't have the time. If you like, don't come on Tuesday, but I'll preach. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.